beautiful little snake. Let's just uh, gently bring him back over here to where we found him. I have reassembled his rock pile. There you go, buddy. Nice to see ya. Good morning, everybody. It is mid-November now, and we're kind of getting into the more winter-like weather. It's definitely transitioning in a big way. Um, even though we really haven't had that much cold weather, the leaves are completely gone, and it's just starting to look and feel a lot more like winter. And it seems like we're moving into more of a winter-type activity pattern for a lot of our animals. Just not much snake movement. A lot of the snakes we've been seeing lately have been basking, which is what we expect this time of year. But anyways, I'm just going to go for a saunter about in the swamp today. There's a couple of uh, salamander species that could be in this area that I frequent a lot that I really want to find, and I feel like it's just a matter of going to the right microhabitat and looking for them. So we're going to kind of try to do that today while keeping our eye out for any snakes that might appear. So let's get to it. Aside from the general absence of snakes, I really do enjoy walking around in the woods this time of year. You can see so well. Oh, cricket frogs, two of them. Hold up, we have our first herp of the day. There's one right there, and then one right there. The area we're herping today is pretty much a complex of uh, beaver wetlands uh, with nice floodplains attached and a really good creek that uh, kind of runs through it and feeds all of it. But here's one of the beaver dams. This can be a really good microhabitat for snakes during the warmer months, but I don't think anything's likely to be hanging around right now. Uh, just due to the fact that snakes tend to hang around higher and drier areas during the winter months because the last thing they want is to be wet and cold at the same time. That is not a squirrel. In fact, it's, it's probably looking to eat a squirrel. You hate to see it. First snake of the day. Nice adult ring neck. Nice to see that snakes are out. This one looks pretty nice too. I mean, that's a big snake for a ring neck. Let's pull him out and see what he looks like. Very cool to the touch, but otherwise healthy. Look at that belly too. There's a lot of black on the belly. Way more than normal. That is super cool actually. I've never seen a ring neck quite like that. Very nice. We will just uh, let him go back into his rock pile though. That is a good sign, I think. Snake number one, hopefully not the only one. There's another one of the usual suspects. This is a uh, southern two-line salamander. I've seen quite a few of them today so far, and I'm sure there will be more. There is an unknown serpent basking right there. It's either a cottonmouth or a water snake, but I can't tell. We're gonna try to get a better look. I'm leaning cottonmouth from what I can see. It is in fact a cottonmouth. I can barely see his face right there. <laughs> well, sure enough, <laughs> it is a cottonmouth. I've actually found a cottonmouth really close to here before on a similar day. It was very gloomy. And I think there's a good possibility that this little root system here on the edge of the swamp is a communal hibernacula. So I'm, I'm still scanning my surroundings for the potential of more, but heck yeah. It's a pretty solid day already, a ring neck and a cotton mouth <laughs> for November. I know that sounds kind of ridiculous to say, but for this time of year, I'll take it. Well, that's a pretty good looking snake for this time of year too. So I got a couple pictures. I'm just gonna leave him right here. Good to see. I'm gonna scan this area a little bit better and see if I can spot any others hanging out because this guy was in a really not great spot. So I feel like if this guy's sitting in the shade right there, there might be even more sitting out in the more ideal basking location, so. Peace out, bro. This is a nice surprise. Pretty little southern leopard frog under a log. Not really something I flip terribly often, but they're super common. It's just one of those things that you, you hear a lot of. You see their tadpoles, you see their eggs all the time. But outside of their breeding window, you just don't see a ton of them. So, kind of cool. Alright, it's about 12.30. And we're kind of getting into an area now that is outside of my normal jurisdiction when I'm hanging out in this part of the state or this part of metro Atlanta at least like I said we're not far at all from places I frequent but you don't have to go very far here to get into very different looking micro habitat and uh, kind of what we're hoping to see today it's just 
get a little bit further from where we normally go find some different looking habitat and I think we've already done that pretty successfully well, that's a beauty look at that beautiful three line salamander we haven't seen one of these in a while and this one is really nice looking got good highlights on them and everything oh we are putting those creek walking nikes to work today look at this log i'm gonna record this one on camera i probably flipped one salamander under the last roughly 100 logs i've flipped and that one is no exception it almost seems like it might be too wet in this area i mean there's not much land i really enjoy seeing nice habitat like this almost as much as i enjoy seeing snakes this is all super flooded and i think that right there might be why it looks like a beaver has really gotten into that tree which means that there's probably a dam somewhere nearby it's making this a little more of a pain to navigate than it otherwise would be but it also makes it better habitat for some of the rarer snakes here like mud snakes sure enough here we have the dam or part of it kind of small but you can see there's a very noticeable shift between down there the dam and then way more water up here all right so I've randomly started getting into a ton of these guys this is a Chattooga dusky salamander Desmognathus prolapsus but a little bit more interestingly I'm gonna let this guy go right there it's a midland water snake under a log a very wet log is a super pretty little guy definitely happy to see him third species of snake of the day i might pull him out so i can put the log back but otherwise we're not going to mess with him too much all right bud let's uh pull you out that was a really good looking little snake look at how healthy this little guy is he is just rotund very nice to see such a healthy snake thanksgiving is only a couple days away and we're finding really nice healthy individuals right now still good to see but uh, I've replaced his log and we're just gonna let him slither back under. Here's another pretty little three-line salamander. This area is all of a sudden very, very productive. All these things that I've shown in the last couple clips have been within a few feet of each other. Well, I just flipped this little guy under a rock. <laughs> that is a beautiful little cottonmouth. His back is kind of mud-stained from being underground. Um, during the cold overnights we've had, I'm assuming, but that would be a very pretty snake if he wasn't dry and covered in soil. Very cool. Second cottonmouth of the day. You'll love to see it. All right, I'm going to return this guy to his rock pile, but very happy to see him. Also, there, there's probably potential to see another one in there because I actually saw a cottonmouth of this rock pile a few weeks ago, and it was a different snake back in October before it started getting really cold. So we're going to look around and see if we can see any more, but beautiful little snake let's just uh gently bring him back over here to where we found him i have reassembled his rock pile there you go buddy nice to see you well i'm not necessarily surprised to rock flip a cotton mouth today i am surprised we haven't found a brown snake that's normally the most common snake we see in this area all right, guys. Well, the day is definitely coming to an end. I'm making my way back to the car. We accomplished our main goal today, which was to check out some new areas uh, in a familiar area. And uh, I think it looked really good over there. I didn't see any snakes in that area, but I did see a couple of salamanders, including a bunch of things that I don't typically see here, which was cool. But I think the real highlight of the day was finding four snakes on uh, the week of Thanksgiving. It's a pretty good buck just staring at me through the woods here on my way back to the car <laughs> well that's a little bit surprising our third cottonmouth of the day here at the end of the day on the way back to the car just chilling right there on the side of the trail this is the first one we've seen that's actually just sitting out in the open so that's really cool uh, we're going to leave that one completely undisturbed since he is chilling in such a good spot 
and uh, probably continue trying to wrap up the day, but if I see anything else, I'll definitely let you guys know. All right, everyone, it's been a couple days. Um, Thanksgiving has come and gone, and we are back in the woods. Today with our buddy Thomas from North Carolina, who's in town for Thanksgiving. And we're gonna try to find his lifer, Hillis' dwarf salamander today, along with anything else we can turn up. So it's very early, it's very cold, and uh, I can't wait for that sun to get a little higher in the sky and warm my bones. There's a dude. It's a little early to be seeing one of these guys, but that is an upland chorus frog. Looks like he's been calling. We actually heard a couple of these calling out in the wetland too, so they're out despite the fact that it's November and normally they don't really start breeding until maybe January. These guys have been strangely absent lately, probably due to the fact that it's been so dry, but there's our first marbled salamander of the day. Probably not the only one we're gonna see. There's another one. They're out. Not in numbers, but they're out. <laughs> Well, admittedly, this is kind of surprising to see. There's just, it's about 45 degrees and it got down to like 39 last night. And there's a, just a box turtle sitting right here. I'm assuming he is not healthy, but he doesn't look terrible. His eyes are closed at the moment, but he could just be sleeping. Definitely odd. It's late for him to be out, but I mean, I've seen him in December, so I've seen him in every month of the year. So I guess it's not terribly surprising, but it's not even nice today. It's it's like 45 degrees and the high is going to be about 60. So definitely strange. But uh, just in case he is packing some sort of disease and is unhealthy, we are not going to touch him. Thomas just flipped the world's smallest four-toed salamander. Look at that thing. You can hardly even tell what it is. We're out here looking for dwarf salamanders and they make that thing look big. Very cool. Let's see if we can gently get a, get a look at this little dude. <laughs> That is so silly. That is adorable. All right, we'll put him back. Wow, he's fast. Well, it doesn't look like much. There's a green frog there, but this is actually the first pseudotriton of any species I found at this spot. I was hoping I'd get muds here eventually, but I guess I will take a very brown red. What you got? Thomas is digging. <laughs> All right, well, we found Thomas's mystery pseudotriton, and it is, in fact, a red salamander. This is a very weird-looking red salamander. It's definitely one of the more Montanus-looking reds I've seen. We're kind of in the intergrade zone between northern and uh, southern red salamanders here, so they look a little bit weird, for sure. But very cool. Well, after a 39-degree overnight, I was not necessarily expecting to see a snake. <laughs> I was hopeful, but that is very cool. This thing is ice cold. I mean, it's really warm in the sun and the tin is really warm, but I assumed that he had kind of crawled under there after coming out from basking, but I guess he probably spent the night under there and has been there since it was a lot warmer last week. But uh, it is about time for him to uh, go underground, so we don't wanna mess with him too much. He's got business to attend to and uh, Thomas has to head home. So that's probably gonna be our last find of the day, but cool to end on a snake very cool to end on a snake i mean after thanksgiving tin flipping in north georgia and it's not even like a warm spell in fact we had a pretty big cold snap move in last night and that's why it was like 39 40 degrees overnight all right i'm ready when you are i'm just gonna release this guy under the sunny bit of tin so he can actually warm up a little bit All right, everyone. Well, it was a pretty lovely day for November. We saw quite a few salamanders, although not as many as I was hoping due to how dry it still is. Even after a lot of rain, we are still very far behind in our precipitation. And hopefully that situation will improve over the next few weeks as we move into December. But I mean, November has had a pretty strong finish. Started slow, but we've had some really solid finds mixed in. And I think today is probably a good place to wrap up this episode. So thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully you've enjoyed and uh, I will see you guys in the next episode, which will probably be filmed somewhere not Georgia and hopefully will involve a lot more snakes. So I will see you guys then. All right, guys. Well, it's been a pretty unproductive spell of uh, 
herping the last couple of outings, but I'm here with one of the coolest things I've seen this fall, and it's it's from about a mile away, and I'll overlay a picture unless I can get closer, but that little speck right there is a coal skink, only the second one I have ever seen in Georgia. I'm going to try to get a closer look, but being a lizard, they're pretty flighty, so I can't make any promises, but I did get a decent photo that I'll attach. Um, this is another new species for the year, though, I believe. I don't think we've seen one... Um, I'm not sure we've seen one on video, and I think I've only maybe seen one or two in uh, states where they're more common, but that is super sick. Well, as I was concerned about, the uh, coal skink disappeared when I tried to approach it and uh, get a closer look, but I'm going to poke around this area a little bit more and see if we can turn up another one. And if we don't get one today, I'm pretty confident that eventually we'll be able to find another one here. So really cool to just actually find a place where these guys occur here in central Georgia, even if we didn't get a great look at that one. And I did get a decent photo of it, but it's just not gonna be a very exciting video, unfortunately. But very cool lizard, one of the rarest things we've seen this year for sure.